Hello guys, in this video I want to show you some new features in the Ultimates Character Project. Let's start with the checkpoint system. To add a checkpoint to your level, please go to Blueprints and then Saving Folder. Right click on BP underscore checkpoint and select Create Child Blueprints class. The player must be inside the trigger box to start the saving progress. Also, there's a spawn point, which is the spawn location after the player restarts from the checkpoint. The spawn point must be above the ground and in the air. You can design your checkpoint style however you like. For example, if you open BP underscore button underscore checkpoint from the same folder, you can see I've added a button for the player to touch to start the saving progress and another object to show an animation and a particle effect after successful saving. For the button animation, I'm using the main trigger overlap event and for the saving effect, I'm overriding the checkpoint effect function. Let's test this checkpoint in the level. As you can see, the first time I touch the button, the saving effect starts, but for the second touch only, the button animation runs. All characters in the level can be linked to a checkpoint. For example, if you kill an enemy but another enemy kills you, after restarting to the checkpoint, the enemy that you killed will respawn, and the other enemy's health will reset to full health. To link an existing AI character in your level to the checkpoint, just click on the enemy, and then from the Ultimate Character menu, select the relevant checkpoint. If you spawn enemies inside the level blueprint, click on the checkpoint in the level, then open the level blueprint. Right click and select create a reference to the checkpoint. Right click again and find the spawn actor from the class. First, select your AI character class, then make the spawn transform. And finally, assign the checkpoint. If you're spawning enemies from another blueprint and you don't have a reference to the checkpoint, then you need to assign a unique tag to each checkpoint. Select the checkpoint in the level, open the actor submenu, and add a tag. For example, Room 1. Then open your Blueprints class. In this case, I'll use Game Mode class. Add Get All Actors of class node and select the BP checkpoint as the Actor class. Then add a For Each Loop with Break and add the Actor Has Tag node to check the checkpoint tag you need. If you don't assign a checkpoint to AI characters, they won't spawn or their health will not reset after restarting from a checkpoint. The next update is the camera focus on the enemy. As you can see when the pointer is on an AI character on the bottom left corner, there's a message that says press K to focus or unfocus on the enemy. As you can see, the player character starts strafing immediately and the camera always rotates towards the enemy target. To see how to set up the animation blueprint, please open the Quang's animation blueprint. First of all, from the pawn variable, run the isInFocus node, then store the result inside a variable, then you need to add the CalculateDirection node and store the result inside a variable, as you can see. If you're using Paragon animations, almost all of them have the start and stop strafing as well as jogging strafe animations. Open the Jog Start and add Blend Poses by Bool. We need to read animations from the Blend Space if the focus on target is true, otherwise read the normal animation. Also, please make sure to add Sync Group. 
If you open the jogging and the jog stop states, you'll see the same setup. Also, to create a blend space for strafing, right-click on the Content Browser, and from the Animation menu, select Blend Space 1D. Now select your character skeleton. In the Axis Settings menu, write a name, for example, Direction. The minimum should be negative 180, and the maximum should be 180. Add forward animation to the center, add backward animation to the beginning and end, add left animation to the negative 90, and right animation to the 90. Now you can use the blend space in the animation graph. All you need to do is connect the direction variable. Also, I want to mention animations for Paragon characters. They have Sync Marker, and the Sync Group option in the Animation Blueprint uses these markers to sync animations. The next update is a dodge system. Currently, we didn't add any dodge animation to the project, but in the Arisa tutorial series, you'll see how to use Maximo animations for a dodging system. To dodge, you just need to press the Block button. As you can see, the character launches himself in the direction of the movement. To set up dodge, open your character from dodge animations. You can select animations for four directions. Also, you can set launch and a jump force for each of them. The next update I want to mention is the scoring system. If the player hits an enemy target, as you can see, the score shows on the screen. And if the player hits enemies continuously, as you can see, a multiplier shows on the bottom right corner. To set the score for each AI character, open the AI character, and from the Hit Score menu, you can set a score for Easy, Normal, and Hard mode. These were the main updates for the Ultimate Character Project, but there's so many other improvements and optimizations in this update. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and share this video, and subscribe to the channel for more. Have a nice day, and goodbye.